Just kidding. All right, so today we're going to talk about European expansion and business. Stop. It is not as boring as it sounds. So we're going to be talking about the Colombian exchange, mercantilism, capitalism, the difference between mercantilism and capitalism, all that good stuff. Get excited. Whoop, whoop. So after exploration and colonization, which we just talked about, Europeans started trading with Africans and Americans. This started the Colombian exchange. Guess who it's named after? This guy right there. There he is looking all fine. He says, I believe I can make money by trading products internationally. He didn't really talk like that, though. He's not a southerner. All right, so the Colombian Exchange is all about exchanging goods across the Atlantic Ocean. You can see we've got a lot of cash crops here, stuff that we like to eat on Thanksgiving, going over here to Europe, Africa, and Asia, and then other items coming across to the Americas. Here you can see here are some of the other products, including diseases, which are going to wipe out the native people. Very sad. All right, so while we do this slide, we're not going to do like the questions that we typically do in class. It's just the info. All right, so trade offers opportunities for people and countries to make money. The merchants on the trade ships, they're making boatloads of money, and the countries, they're also making boatloads of money. So mercantilism, our first big vocab term. Mercantilism is all about the mother country making some money. So mercantilism is when the nation makes money. Capitalism is when the individual makes money. So mercantilism, the theory says, a nation can become powerful if they have a lot of bullion or gold and silver. So now when you go home, I want you to be like, hey mom, can I have some bullion? And then when she looks at you like you're a crazy person, be like, money, duh, everybody knows that. So mercantilism, the mother country makes money. Lots of M's. All right, countries can increase their wealth or bullion in the following ways. This is important because it's going to tell you how to become a millionaire if you're a country. First way, export more than you import. It means you're going to sell more than you buy. I mean, you've got to have a lot of cool stuff that everybody's buying, and you're not buying too much from them because you can't make money if you're spending it like crazy. So you want to export more than you import, sell more than you buy. The next thing these countries are going to do is they're going to build colonies, like the colonies in North and South America, um, in order to get natural resources. So what these countries do is they go to these colonies, take their natural resources, make them grow, grow cash crops, get those cash crops for cheap, take the gold like in Pocahontas when they're mining for gold and singing about it. Mine, boys, mine for the taking. They want gold. They want the natural resources that are in that country so they can take them and make money off of them. It makes sense. It's kind of like stealing. Then they're going to keep foreign-made products out of the country by charging them a higher tax or a tariff. So when you go to Walmart, let's just say at Walmart, there's two shirts. They're exactly the same purple t-shirt. One is made in America. It's $5 for this lovely purple, purple t-shirt. France also makes a purple t-shirt. It's $5. But when France brings their t-shirts into the United States, they have to pay a tax or a tariff. We'll say it's a dollar. Well, now that purple t-shirt made in France is $6 at Walmart, and the United States, or the one made in the United States, is $5. Most people are going to buy the $5 t-shirt, save themselves a buck. So what this does is it keeps foreign-made products out of the country because they're not going to sell these items in the country if they're not actually going to sell and make money on them. So they keep foreign-made products out. Then these Countries also make the colonies purchase items just from the ruling country. So let's say the English colonies in America um, are forced to buy guns from England. England's making guns and France is making guns. Well, the colonies are only allowed to buy guns that are made in England. That increases England's exports. And the colonies can't do anything about it because they're owned by their mother country. All right. 
So we call this the commercial revolution. A revolution is a change, a drastic change, a paradigm shifting event. It's a big deal. So it's a change in commerce. The way people are buying and selling goods, it changes. It's a big change. It changes the world. It alters the future. We call this the commercial revolution. All right, so some things that go along with commerce and mercantilism in this whole unit. Uh, here's some vocab terms. First, supply and demand. In order to make money, merchants have to make decisions based on supply and demand. So supply is the amount of product available and demand is what people want. So let's say the supply of something is scarce. There's not a lot of it. It's difficult, difficult to get. People are going to pay a lot of money for it. For example, a basketball signed by a famous person like Michael Jordan, or as you people would like, LeBron James. Because it's signed by a famous person, it's scarce. So people are going to pay more money for this basketball than this basketball. Or with our unit, merchants would go someplace where there's a lot of spices. The spices are cheap because there's a whole bunch of it. Then they would bring it back to the country that doesn't have spices, where it's scarce, and sell it for a lot of money. If a business has a large quantity of something and people do not want it, let's say it's swimsuits in the winter time. If they have a lot of swimsuits and it's January and people are freezing, they're going to lower the price of those swimsuits to get rid of the inventory. If there's a large quantity and or there's a low quantity and people do want it, they'll pay more money for it. All right, so how would a smart merchant use the laws of supply and demand to make money? Think about it. If you were a merchant, how could you make bukus of dough? Well, merchants would find goods that are cheap in one place, like I said, spices in Asia, and in high demand somewhere else in the world. So, for example, would you like a sporte? The Caribbean has a whole bunch of sugar, all these sugar plantations. In Europe, especially in England, where they drink a lot of tea, they don't have sugar because sugar doesn't grow there. So they go to the Caribbean, buy cheap sugar, bring it to Europe, bring it to England, and sell the sugar for a lot of money to all those tea drinkers. All right, our next vocabulary term, entrepreneurs. Commerce, the buying and selling of goods led to the rise of a business person called an entrepreneur. Some of your parents might be entrepreneurs if they started a business. An entrepreneur risks money in hopes of earning a profit. An entrepreneur could be like those people we see on Shark Tank, either the people that are coming up with a product and risking their own money to make this product, or the people that are investing money in hopes of earning a profit. A joint stock, co stock company is when a lot of people put their money into a business, they, bought, they purchase stocks in a business because then you don't lose as much money if the business were to fail. So when business ideas are risky or super duper expensive, a lot of people put their money together, we call it buying stocks in a company, and then you own part of the company. If the company does really well, you make money. If the company doesn't do well, you lose money. For example, Let's all pretend we're entrepreneurs in the 80s. People are like, cell phones, they're cool. And other people are like, what? Cell phones? That's crazy. Who wants to have a phone attached to them all the time? People be looking at their phones all the time. That's weird. Well, let's, let's just pretend we're like, cell phones are cool. We'll invest in a company called Apple. Stocks are selling at $100 each. So let's, instead of me putting $1,000 down myself, uh, as a class, we decide to all put in $100 and we've got $1,000 into the business. We'll say there's only 10 of us. And Apple becomes a success. Now, if I bought stock for $100 and now the stocks are selling at $500 each, I just made a profit of $400. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, so the result of risk-taking entrepreneurs, all these merchants that are taking risks, is a rise in the middle class. Prior to this, we didn't have much of a middle class. Now we have peasants, a peasant class, that's able to make more money than they were as peasants. Now that they're risking money and traveling the world, selling items, 
they're able to make more money for their family. So we get this middle class. All right, capitalism. Capitalism is a system in which people own property, make goods, and buy and sell freely. So in a capitalistic society, the individual is making profits for themselves. Mercantilism, the mother country makes money. Capitalism, the individual makes money, makes a profit. Free enterprise goes with capitalism. Free enterprise is the freedom of private businesses to compete for profits without government involvement. So here we've got McDonald's and Burger King. McDonald's is all, I just made the double cheeseburger. Everyone should come here and buy my cheeseburger. And Burger King, they're competing for your business, so they make the double cheeseburger with better beef and bacon. And then everybody goes there, and then so they're competing for a better quality product. They might be competing with better prices, like a dollar menu, um, in order to make more profits. All right, so capitalism, how does it differ from mercantilism? Capitalism is the individual making money, or that business making profits. Mercantilism is about the mother country making money. All right. We got some notes here, but we're not going to go over that. I hope you learned a lot. Have a good day.